because the metric had a tetrametric surface. Aquifers! Fred Chang, the science thing. Fred Chang, the science thing. Fred, 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 Fred. Fred Chang, the science thing. Good afternoon. This is Fred Chang, the science thing. Today we'll start by defining the important terminology for dealing with aquifer and aquitard systems. We will differentiate between piezometric and potentiometric head in surficial and combined aquifers. We will conduct theoretical analysis and explain the concept and its real world applications. An aquifer is a body of water beneath the Earth's surface from which water sources such as precipitation or stream input collect intake. This water slowly saturates a permeable layer of Earth. The opposite of an aquifer is an aquitard, where this section of earth is impermeable with very little water movement through it. This aquitard, which can occur above or below an aquifer, has distinctive impacts on pressures below ground. Before describing the governing equations for groundwater flow, we will first define piezometric head and its application to an aquifer system. It is the energy per unit weight of the fluid due to the elevation above a datum and the fluid's pressure head. This is frequently measured by a change in height within a piezometer, which will be used in our real-world example. Using piezometric heights from a single confined aquifer, we can map an elevation gradient called the potentiometric surface. Using an example, this imaginary surface is shown, the blue dotted line. A slope created by the elevation and spatial distance between the two shows the line to which water will rise corresponding to the pressure in the confined aquifer. In contrast, the surficial aquifer, which is open to the atmosphere, the piezometric surface will be the elevation of the water table. Consider the following. Here we have a simulation of a multi-layer aquifer and aquitard system. We will use this model to analyze the theoretical parameters to better understand the characteristics of confined and surficial aquifers. So this is our small scale setup. As you can see, there are seven wells in total, or piezometer tubes, and each piezometer tube goes into a different location within the small scale setup, whether that be into an unconfined aquifer or below the aquitard into the confined aquifer. As well, you can see the majority of the model is made up of sand, which we used an average K or hydraulic conductivity value in our Darcy's Law equation. On the left hand side of our model, we have an artesian well. This means if the well opening is below the potential metric surface, we will have free flowing water from the top of the well. All right, get your rulers out. It's time to get measuring. Remember, safety first. <laughs> now, let's use what we measure to determine some characteristics of the model. First, we're gonna use Darcy's Law, which relates the flow rate of water inside a saturated medium. K is the hydraulic conductivity. It's a measure of a soil's ability to transmit water. Good aquifers, such as those made of sorted gravel and sand, have high hydraulic conductivity and high fluid flow. In this example, we have used a value of 0.1 cm per second for well-sorted sand. The HDL is the slope between two points. We see that the final flow is 4.29 times 10 to the negative 2 cubic centimeters per second. Now, we can use Bernoulli's equation to find the potential metric head at point 6. The first term is the velocity head, which we can get from our Darcy calculations. The second term is the elevation head, which is the distance between the piezometer bottom and a datum, in this case, the base of the tank. The final term is the pressure head. As you can see, velocity head is almost negligible and is often ignored in groundwater calculations. This makes an engineer's life a lot easier. Today, we review the basic aquifer aquitar system and how pressure underground is affected by water entrapment and movement. The symmetric head, the energy per unit weight, combines its elevation above a datum and a water's pressure head. This is represented by the height to which water rises in a piezometer. The potential metric surface uses an array of piezometers to create an imaginary plane to show where the water will rise. We've demonstrated with Darcy's Law how water flows through permeable media and a negligible effect velocity head has on a total hydraulic head in a groundwater system. And now you know. Next week, we have Water on Mars. No, Fred.
just start over. No, that's fine. <laughs> well, now that he said start over, I think. Let's go. And action. Said, are you ready? Just yell action. We should do a bloopers take. <laughs>